All right, good afternoon. So my presentation today is on server-side rendering versus client-side rendering. And you guys are probably asking yourself at this point, which is better or which is better for me? And the answer to that is, well, it depends. It depends on what you want to do and what you want your site to look like. But the good news for you guys, being that you're all React experts at this point, is that React can do both. <coughs> so today we're going to talk about what's happening uh, during client-side rendering, what's happening during server-side rendering, a comparison of the two in terms of performance, and one case study. So let's begin with client-side rendering because I think at this point, this is what we're a little bit more familiar with now and what exactly is happening during client-side rendering. <coughs> so your initial request loads the page, layout, the CSS, and the JavaScript. Some, of all, some or all of the content isn't included. Instead, the JavaScript makes another request, gets a response, most likely a JSON, and generates the appropriate HTML, likely using a templating library such as React. And for subsequent updates to the page, the client-side rendering approach repeats the same process. So this is what client-side rendering um, looks like in a graphical form. The server sends a response to a browser. The browser downloads a JS. Um, the browser executes React. And while all this is happening, we're going to see a loading screen or a nice little picture that you put to keep your users calm. And then both at the same time, you're going to see your page viewable and interactable. Server-side rendering is a little bit different. And with server-side rendering, your initial request loads the page, layout, CSS, JavaScript, just like the client-side rendering, but you're also going to have your content. And what I mean by content is our HTML. So this is what um, a setup for server-side rendering would look like in React. Um, you have your uh, constant uh, React, and you're going to require React. You're going to require React DOM, and you have your React DOM render um, like we are all used to. But if you're using server-side rendering, um, you're going to require React as well. But you're going to want this um, little function here called render to, st to string. And that's going to come from the React DOM server. You're going to place your app inside of render to string, and your result must be inserted into a target div. So one area where a lot of developers go crazy is they think that um, server-side updates actually mean page refreshes. And that's not always the case. Um, you can see here in an example using jQuery, um, we're targeting an element called load tweets. And on click, we're going to make a, a request to the server to get the tweets from um, that person. We're going to enter in the last tweet ID. Any tweet that came after that last tweet, we're going to prepend to the DOM. And we're using a prevent default to stop the page from re-rendering. So in other words, we're still only doing a partial update, but we're letting the server do the rendering and certain that finalized output into our DOM. So this is what server-side rendering looks like graphically. Um, the server sending a ready-to-be-rendered HTML response to the browser. The browser renders the page. It's now viewable. And the browser downloads the JavaScript. The browser executes React. Meanwhile, our client um, can view the page. And after the React executes, the page becomes interactable. And just to highlight the differences, if we look at them side by side, um, this is where we can really see these differences come into play. With client-side rendering, um, it takes a little bit longer for the page view to come up, but it comes up both viewable and interactable. In server-side rendering, our view comes up a little bit before, but we have to wait a little while before it becomes interactable. So why is server-side render faster. Well, um, client-side rendering requires more JavaScript to be downloaded. That means more JavaScript to be parsed. It requires a second HTTP request to load the content, and then more JavaScript to generate the template. Um, even if the initial JavaScript is cached, it still needs to get parsed, and the second request isn't going to happen until the document is loaded. With server-side rendering, your server's response uh, to the browser is the HTML of your page, and it's already ready to be rendered. So comparing the two, server-side advantages over client-side. The initial page load is faster. The blank page flicker that we all see every once in a while that happens with uh, client-side rendering um, doesn't happen with server-side rendering. 
Um, Server-side rendering is great for search engine optimization. Um, your content is present before you get it, so search engines are able to index it and crawl it efficiently. Something that's not so easy with client-side rendering. It's great for static sites, so think about sites that are very uh, heavily text-based, like maybe the New York Times or WordPress. Um, in those situations, we might want to consider server-side rendering over client. So the cons over of ser server-side rendering over client-side rendering. Um, frequent server requests, and frequent server requests can cause bottlenecking with sites that are very interactive. Uh, the throughput of your server is significantly less than with a uh, client-side render, and for React in particular, the throughput, input, the throughput impact is extremely large. Um, React DOM to server, render to string, is a synchronous CPU-bound call. It holds the event loop, and it means that the server will not be able to process any other requests until React DOM server, render to string, completes. Um, let's say it takes 500 milliseconds for um, your render to complete. That means at most you can do two requests per second, and this is a very big consideration if you want your page to be interactive. You have an overall uh, slow page rendering. While the page view comes up earlier, your client's not going to be able to interact with it right away um, until React is done executing. So all of these factors lead to non-rich site interactions. So we're going to do a case study of Walmart.com. Walmart.com recently switched from client side to server side rendering. And Walmart Labs um, made substantial improvements. And they released some of their code as a framework called Electrode.js. Uh, and during the redevelopment of their site, Walmart Labs developed a new framework, and it improved the render to string time by up to 70%. So if any of you are considering doing some server-side rendering, Electrode.js might be worth checking out. It's available as an NPM download. And this is just a page highlighting the improvements. As you can see with server-side rendering, um, the home page, category page, and search page all come up a lot faster than with um, client-side rendering. So um, in conclusion, the server-side pros are search engines can crawl the site for a better search engine optimization. The initial page load is faster and is great for static sites. Server-side rendering cons are frequent server requests and overall slow page rendering full page reloads, and non-rich uh, site interactions. The client side pros are we have richer uh, site interactions, faster website rendering after the initial load. It's great for web applications. And we have a robust selection of JavaScript libraries to support it. And our cons are a low search engine optimization if it's not implemented correctly. The initial load might require more time. And in most cases, it requires an external library. So uh, when to use SSR? You might want to consider server-side rendering if you need search engine optimization on Bing, Yahoo, or uh, Baidu. You already have a working React, uh, React app. You need the best possible performance, and you're willing to pay for the extra server resources. I would also add in if your site is heavily text-based, you might want to consider server-side rendering. And you might not want to use server-side rendering if your React app isn't finished yet, get it working first, get it up and running, and then worry about the optimization later. Um, if search engine optimization it, on Google is good enough, Google's a particular case where their um, optimization works um, particularly well with client-side rendering. The other search engines, not so much. And if your server resources are scarce, perhaps due, perhaps due to low budget, or an inability to scale, then server-side rendering might not be for you. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>